Okay, welcome back to another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning, and today our guest is Dr. Paul Bennett from Nova Scotia, Canada. So, Paul, can you get us started by telling us a little bit about yourself? I'm a policy research analyst and uh, a former teacher, headmaster, and uh, I've been in most roles in education, all the way from teacher to head of an academic uh, department, um, history department, to a dean of academics and faculty growth, to a headmaster, to an elected board member. And uh, I now I'm basically doing policy research analysis and producing papers and uh, commentaries for the public uh, media. Okay. Now, I know one of the areas that you've looked at quite extensively for I guess as long as I've known you, which would probably be getting close to a decade here now, is the use of technology in education, and particularly distance learning or online learning, e-learning. And uh, we've got a bunch of teachers now that are, um, at this stage, many of them have probably been doing it for anywhere from one to three weeks, but they're still getting used to this and still looking for guidance as to how to go about it. Uh, based upon your experiences, what sort of advice would you give folks like that who are just starting out in this area without much background in it? I've worked with many teachers over the years. In fact, I've hired teachers and trained them and I've worked with them on technology. I'm not an expert in technology by any means, but I've always advised them to keep it simple, to stay focused and um, to uh, not be too hard on yourself. They're thrown into an impossible situation here with technology that hasn't, um, they're not familiar with, they haven't been properly trained to use and they're str scrambling to uh, learn it all on the fly. So um, it won't be perfect. I think your terminology is good. I think it's the triage. And I like the idea that it's almost as if it's a triage in the educational operating room, emergency room. Uh, where they're being forced um, under, I'd say, adverse conditions with their children at home to do things that are new to them. And I think it's going to be experimental, and I don't think it's going to be perfect, uh, nor do I think it's going to be a fair test of e-learning, online learning, or blended learning. Okay. Now, you mentioned that you've been a headmaster and that you've been involved with the board, so you've interacted with a lot of parents over the years. And uh, as you mentioned, we've got a lot of kids now that are trying to learn from home. And while parents are always a partner in this process, we're asking them to be a much larger partner now than what they've traditionally been. Um, do you have any advice that you'd give to those folks? I'm more inclined in this case to uh, be critical of what's out there. Most of these home learning programs that have been announced, certainly province to province, have left a lot unsaid. They will stipulate that a certain number of hours are, to, are expected in each grade level. They won't say what the parents are to do or really what the teachers are going to be doing. The expectations are very fuzzy. So I think it's left a lot of parents in a quandary. And I've been reading all kinds of tweets and talking to parents who have the sense that, um, you know, they're, they're kind of at sea here and trying to invent things as they go along. And depends on what jurisdiction you're in as to how much guidance you're going to get. For example, if you're in Alberta with the Alberta Distance Learning Program, there are more resources. It's clear. The um, expectations for teachers are clear. The teachers are to be providing you know, five hours of instruction up to grade six, and there's a clear curriculum and there's more integrated learning, and there's a sense that there's going to be some form of evaluation. But if you're in Nova Scotia, for example, you are left with the impression that this is all flexible, it's optional, and unless you happen to take um, the flyer that comes in um, delivered door to door by the Salt Wire Network, you won't even know what the activities are. It's um, basically hit and miss. I chose the two extremes. Um, I think Ontario and, uh, and Alberta are clear about what teachers' expectations are. The others are very fuzzy, and I think that really complicates life for uh, parents because they don't know how much they're expected to do in relation to what the teachers are going to be doing. I think that's the real uh, 
challenge here is uh, parents left in a situation which is unnatural, uh, maybe not as confident about teaching, and they find themselves unclear about who's doing what. I think it's been thrown together so quickly. There's a patchwork of curriculum, and it's very difficult for them to sort it all out. Um, they're basically left uh, on their own in some cases. One um, university professor in Halifax took one look at what was offered in Nova Scotia, and he said, I, I conclude one thing. It's up to us to educate our own children. And I think that was a bit unfair, but that's the feeling I'm getting from a lot of parents. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Paul. Um, so this has been a, another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning with, and today our with has been Dr. Paul Bennett.